That's what I tell myself to cope with and deal. Try to convince myself these several years were not even real. Try to convince myself the media was making this up. That if I wait here, more figures will be waking me up. But instead, I'm in my bed, game over. I ain't even drank nothing, but I got a hangover. First, I was drunk. Welcome back. This is the final me. segment. Down the rabbit hole. June 29, 2011. And today, I'm joined by my good friend, Susan Lindauer. Susan, we were talking during the break about uh, the new war crimes that have been going on uh, since we, you know, since the last time I interviewed you about a week and a half ago. You've actually gotten some new video, which will we will be getting up within a few days. Uh, go ahead and tell the listeners uh, some of the new things you've discovered. Okay, this is very important because one of the things that's happened is a lot of people are so upset about these videos that they're suggesting maybe it's not Libya, maybe it's Iraq, maybe it is Gaddafi who's doing it. They don't want to admit that the rebels are actually capable of this stuff and that the United States is backing the wrong side. Okay, I want you to know something. We have tracked down the family of the beheaded Libyan soldier, okay? We have a a fact-finding delegation in Libya in Tripoli, traveled to that man's home and interviewed his family on video. And that video has come through or is coming through right now. And we should have that up by the weekend. Um, We also have uh, more documentation of the rapes. Uh, tragically some of these women have almost died Uh, not only are they gang raping women but they're cutting off their breasts and you have to realize that these are mostly 15 16 year old girls who are very sheltered who are very pure and and, pardon me virginal chaste you you understand the concept of virginity in the Islamic world and you have to under you have to even if you don't like Islam you have to sympath you have to grieve for these little girls who are who are you know hoping that all their lives to have these the, to to be good women honorable women and then they're kidnapped at gunpoint in the middle of the night and taken to rape parties as virgins okay now think about this these are these are deeply traumatizing experiences, and they are gang raping them, and then they're cutting off their breasts with knives while they're alive. Okay, they're not they're not even cutting their throats first. They're cutting off their breasts and leaving them to bleed to death. And a lot and of people have asked me about that. They said, "Well, that's Al Qaeda didn't do that. That's something that you see in the Congo." Well, who do you think trained? You don't think that the CIA? help train some of those very evil people that ran around killing people in the Congo. We hired those guys as mercenaries to guard our bases in Iraq. Are you yeah, kidding yeah. me? I mean, that those, yeah. those, those the, they're, they're mercenaries from the, that, that were the war criminals in the Congo were hired and have on record killed U.S. troops on the U.S. embassy grounds in Iraq because U.S. troops are not allowed to carry weapons on the embassy grounds. Only the private security guards can. And these guys are all yeah. you know, mercenaries that were running around killing people in Uganda and the Congo and everywhere else. It, it's, they're it, all it's, interconnected. It's very, it's, it's very upsetting. And this is like Khmer Rouge crimes and Rwanda crimes. This is like Sierra Leone crimes where they chopped off their arms. These are hideous things. And the, can you imagine? Now, now everybody, like, you know, we all like to hate Gaddafi. But really and truly, would you be proud if the United States was backing the force in Sierra Leone who cut off the arms, who hacked off these arms with machetes and left these people with no arms in their farm, in farming communities? How, and even the little children were hacked up. They hang the one guy upside down by his feet and saw his head off. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. this, is, this is who we're backing, people. These are the same monsters oh. that, we, that we, we were so afraid of. We had to hide under our beds years ago because these were the bad guys. Our kids were going to fight in Iraq, and they died fighting in Iraq. And now we're backing yeah. these very same scumbags. How does yes. that make you feel? Because it pisses me off. Yes. Yes. And people want to say, oh, maybe, maybe it's really Qaddafi's forces who are doing it. So I want, I challenge all of you, this weekend we're going to have that video up. Uh, and, and I want you all to, to look at it and look at and you're going to see 
this is definitely inside Libya. This is a man uh, uh, who was a soldier working for Gaddafi who was killed. Um, we're going to have more. We have a, a testimonial affidavits from uh, written affidavits uh, from human rights attorneys inside Libya who are interviewing the rape victims. Uh, we have some videos of the rape victims that are going to go up. And and that and and uh, Popeye, do you think those videos of the rape victims could be up this weekend? Do you think it, that it'll be that soon? Yes, we're, we could. We're gonna. We're we're trying. Uh, we, we the uh, I know you've got so much to do. From, well, the website we hosted it from uh, has been under heavy attack, obviously, since we we created yeah. it for it. But. Um, we have to fix two of the older videos, so we're going to be playing with it anyway. So, yeah, we should have them up by the end of the weekend, and then I, that way we can show everybody mm -hmm. the testimonies. And not only that, Webster Tarpley, because he's part of this fact-finding mission, you know, along with Wayne Madsen, Cynthia McKinney, yeah, and others. Yeah. Okay, they've all been rotating in and out, and uh, Webster Tarpley talked to a family that said – they, they've already got plans because they know there's going to be a ground invasion. Uh, Gaddafi has given out uh, RPGs and Kalashnikovs, AK-47s, to the, the residents, millions of them. And the residents have said, we'll take them because we want to defend our country. See, the residents of Libya actually call the quote-unquote rebels that we're backing, they call them terrorists. Okay, that's what yes. they consider them. Okay, so we're not we're not we're not helping anybody. The people that we're bombing and killing, Gaddafi's army, it's not a standard standing army. It's his people that are standing up in defense of their own country. We're bombing innocent people defending their own land. How does that make yeah. you feel? That would be like the red Chinese yeah. coming in here and bombing the, the the hell out of the civilian populace trying to defend the United States. That's exactly what it would be like. It's the same thing. He's, we're killing women. We have women that are 18, 19 year old women that are standing up to defend their country because they know that there's other girls that are being dragged off and raped and they want to stand up while they still can so they don't get beheaded and have their breasts cut off and get raped. And we, we bomb them with 2,000 pound JDAMs because, hey, that's what we do. We'll bomb that's you right. back to the Stone Age. And, 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 and listen, this is very important what you just said. Uh, in response to the NATO accusations that Gaddafi's forces have been handing out Viagra, Cynthia McKinney found that the, uh, the major supplier of Viagra, the major importer to Libya, was the United States government who is handing out Viagra to older rebels, trying to get them motivated to fight and to get them energized. And so, actually, the United States has fueled some of this rape binge itself uh, as a direct consequence of providing Viagra to its own rebel soldiers. Gaddafi's response to the rapes has been very different. Gaddafi has brought out his women, very famous women soldiers. Um, Gaddafi, the, the, in classical history, uh, the old Amazon women soldiers were from Libya. And there's a long tradition of women from Libya being pretty tough ladies. And in fact, they are now, uh, Gaddafi has deployed women soldiers and, and units throughout, the, throughout his area so that women soldiers are on hand to protect other women, and there's no possibility. They, they really are, you know, policing it. So he's actually acting in the most responsible manner possible to make sure that the men are not just out there, uh, you know, boys will be boys. They're not, there's none of that happening. Gaddafi's actually the one who's on the, on the right side of this. And if we really believe in human rights, and if we're really opposed to terrorism, then we should stop financing al-Qaeda in Libya, and we should start protecting the people of Libya by supporting Gaddafi, of all things. Well, you, you know, it sounds crazy. Leave them alone. It sounds crazy, but also, you know, if we just leave him alone, he can handle his own business. We have to yes. step in because these, these guys are, oh, help us, they're going to kill innocent people, when, in fact, it's time and time again. It, it's shown that they've been killing innocent people. Again, that fact-finding mission, Tarpley, he, he, when he came back, he's, he said, um, in fact, that he was still over there, uh, uh, and uh, Alex Jones talked to him via cell phone, and Tarpley said that the, the families over there, they've, they've got entire families where the family has talked about it, and they have enough weapons amongst just one family to take on an entire platoon. 
They are, and, they, and they're prepared. These people are mentally prepared to do it. They are gonna. They are gonna create a friggin' bloodbath based on lies. This is gonna start World War Three. We have yes. to stop this, and we have to get these people out of power because they are just psychotic. Yes. 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 And all this stuff about Libya's involvement in terrorism, it's BS. Uh, honest to God, our operation in, 1990, in the 1990s got the terrorists out of sanctuary in Libya. By, 1990, by the beginning of 1999, Libya handed over the, men for, the two Libyan men for the Lockerbie trial in March of 1999. And by that time, Libya was cleaned out. Even it wasn't, we went way beyond Lockerbie. We, we did, we handled all the terrorists that Qaddafi had been giving sanctuary to. They were just, they were just executed in the desert uh, or they were evicted. And they, Libya has had no terrorist threat since the 1990s. That's a fact. Well, they will now because we... we yeah, now they will. We, now we they will because we imported it. We are creating it. Just like in Iraq. But it's not homegrown. Just like in Iraq. There was no Al-Qaeda in Iraq, Susan, until we brought it in. All right. Until we brought it in. We get cut off again. We'll be back. Susan, thank you very much for coming on. I always. loved it. it. Popeye, awesome. Thank you very much, Emma. Thank you so much for, post, for having the guts to post this. No problem. Guys, Susan, will be back on. Thank you.